Hello, cheap skaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheap Skates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up, and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. I'm sure there might be, I'm sure there will be questions about this video. So if you could please ask them all in capital letters so they stand out in the comment section below me, I'll do my best to answer them. And if I can't, I'm pretty sure there's a cheap skater out there who can. It is cold today. It is freezing cold. It's currently sitting on about nine degrees here. Ooh, so this is a really good topic for today's show, staying warm. But before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber to our channel, please click that subscribe button below me and then click the bell and select how often you want to be notified of new videos on our channel. It's June, it's winter, I shouldn't be complaining about the cold and I'm not really because when winter comes, I really am grateful yet again to be living in Australia. We have very mild winters compared to our Northern Hemisphere neighbours. We don't get snowstorms, we don't get ice storms or below zero temperatures that go for days on end, all day, not just overnight. And I truly am grateful. But it still gets cold, especially in the southern states and along the southern end of the Great Dividing Range. In the past, we, my family and I, have experienced 37 days in a row of mornings where the warmest was more, my, or minus three and the coldest was minus six. Didn't bother me quite so much, but poor Wayne had to get up and go and feed cattle in those temperatures. The coldest morning I've experienced was minus seven. That was one Queen's birthday weekend when we were camping in the Victorian high country. Now that was cold. <laughs> Even the olive oil froze that night. It was cold. But for most of us, we don't see those temperatures. Not regularly, if at all. And we can manage to stay cosy and warm in our homes at a price because heating costs money. Whether you heat with gas or electricity or wood, it costs. And this winter is no exception. Now, already our state premier warned back in February that there will be blackouts this winter. And now we have the federal government warning of blackouts this coming winter. And gas shortages. Um, the news was reporting this morning that our Premier has asked for our gas allocation to be increased. And the cost of natural gas has gone up over 200% in the last few months. The cost of the wholesale cost. The cost of electricity has gone up and the retail cost is going up. It's set to go up between 18 and 20% again. If you have to buy your firewood, then you know just how much a tonne of firewood has gone up. It's almost doubled in price in two winters. And those price rises have a really big impact on your budget. Of course they do. That just makes sense. So it's time to get smart about staying warm because you can stay warm without spending a fortune. Now, most of the ideas I have to share with you are free. And they are all easy and simple. You don't have to spend any money to do them. First off, dress for the season. Now, I know I've been telling you this for years, whether it's summer or winter, but there are still some people who simply don't get it. It's winter. It's June. It's supposed to be cold. In fact, it is freezing, bitterly cold at the moment. So dress like it is winter and cold, not like it's midsummer in the tropics. 
you need to seriously get out of the habit of short sleeves and bare feet because you can flick the thermostat up and keep warm. Every little flick of that thermostat costs you money. So dress for the season. Now, layers work. Any hiker will know that and they'll tell you that. So put socks on your feet. Wear, there you go, socks on your feet. Wear leggings under your jeans. Craig, if it's really cold, wear two pairs of leggings under your jeans. I do, especially in the middle of winter. They cost $5 a pair three years ago from Kmart. I think they're around $7.50 a pair now. They will last you for years. They are really warm. They're more comfortable than tights. <laughs> No one knows that you have that extra layer under your jeans or your trousers. Then put on a Spencer. Now, I'm showing my age with this. A Spencer, for those of you who are young enough to not know, is simply a lightweight top, just like this one, with long sleeves, the fluff is free, that you wear under your blouse or your T-shirt for extra warmth, sort of like a long sleeve singlet. They work too. They are often made from banalon, which is a really light lightweight synthetic fabric. Or if you can get them, the merino ones are divine and they don't itch. Put on a jumper. Put on two jumpers if it's really cold or a jumper and a vest. Now, I wear scarves all year round. I just like them. But in winter, I wear them to keep my neck and my chest and sometimes even my ears warm. This is a pure wool scarf that I actually managed to knit myself. And it is great. It's the right length to wrap around my neck twice and it keeps my neck warm. Wear slippers on your feet. Slippers aren't just for grandmas and granddads. They are for everybody the trend of floorboards is lovely. I'm absolutely sure it is. But those floors are cold. So put slippers on. Look, we think nothing of layering up our babies and our children. So why do we hesitate to layer up ourselves? If you are properly dressed for the season, you can turn the thermostat down. And that means you turn your bill down. It doesn't need to be set any higher than 18 degrees. You'll still be warm, your house will still be warm and dry and you know, you'll know you notice the difference in the bill when you get it. It does make a difference. The next thing to do is think about the rooms that you are heating. Are you using all of them? If you're not, close the windows tight, shut off the vents and close the doors. Now, in our house, because I'm a bit of a fresh air fiend, I have the kitchen window and one window in our bedroom open about five centimetres, two inches in winter. That's just to let a little of fresh air into the house all the time because all the other windows are sealed up tight, as are the external doors. Don't waste money heating rooms that you don't need to heat and that you don't use it's ridiculous and it's a waste. Close your blinds and your drapes as soon as the sun goes of an afternoon. Now for me, that's between 4.45 and 5 p.m. this time of year. And that means I just go around and I close the blinds, pull the drapes in the lounge room, the dining room, the kitchen, our bedroom. And it helps to keep the warmth in the house. That's the idea. Warm air stays in, cold air stays out. We use blankets and rugs when we're um, sitting watching TV or talking or whatever, or recording YouTube videos. See, I've got my quilt here. It's over my, it's actually over my knees at the moment um, to keep us warm because we don't need to turn the thermostat up. We keep it set. No higher than 18 degrees. 
we just need to be smarter about how we are keeping warm. Eat warm foods. I know, who'd have thought? Soups would warm you up or stews would warm you up or curries would warm you up or pies or pasta dishes. They are all warming. They're all comfort foods. They're all hearty and they are warming. Keep the salads small and mostly for summer. Drink hot drinks. Make a thermos of hot chocolate or coffee in the morning or keep a thermos of boiling water handy to make tea during the day so you're not boiling the kettle all the time. Now ginger and lemon tea is really delicious and it is really, really warming. And no calories in that one, no kilojoules in that one. If you use a thermos to hold the boiling water, you're not spending the money to boil the kettle over and over. And it does cost money. Who, you know, you think I'm just going to make a cuppa. That costs you money too. Now, if it's really, really cold, fingerless gloves are amazing because they let you still do the things you need to do without the clumsiness of normal knitted gloves or mittens. They still allow you to vacuum or hang the washing or make the bed or type or knit, or crochet, or make YouTube videos, and they keep your hands warm. I remember being told once, you know, if you keep your feet warm and your head cool, then your temperature controls itself really well. So warm hands and feet, because they're extremities, cool head. When it comes to bedtime, this is not the season for glamour ladies. Drag out the warm jammies. Put on bed socks. Use wheat bags to warm your bed before you get into it. Put an extra blanket or quilt on the bed. When our kids were small, I made fleece sheets for their beds and they were toasty warm without the need for electric blankets or even wheat bags. They have never had those. Now, all I did was go to Spotlight and I just bought three two and a half meter lengths of micro fleece when it was on sale and I brought it home and I just tucked it over their bottom sheet that was it because they only had the one they only needed it on the bottom it kept them warm I use the same idea when we are winter camping in our tent it keeps us toasty warm. You, you will be amazed at how warm it will keep you even on the coldest minus seven <laughs> degree night. Staying warm, it doesn't have to cost money. It really does just take a little thought, especially if we are used to always being warm. We go from a warm bed to a warm house to a warm car or train or bus to a warm office or shopping centre or whatever and home again where it's warm. We need to think a little about how we're keeping warm. Now, just before I go, I just want to say that while I might moan and groan about the cost of heating, I am blessed to have a roof over my head and wood for the fire to keep me warm. There are so many Australians who don't have either of those or the ability to stay warm this winter. So if you find you have a spare blanket or an old sleeping bag that you're not using or you've swapped dunas or you've knit or crochet blankets or, I don't know, you have a winter jacket that you no longer need, please consider passing it on to one of the charities that are crying out for those things at this time of year so that someone else in need can stay warm. I'm not trying to shame anyone into doing anything. I'm just saying, you know, it's just the thought. This time of year, if we're warm and happy, there are people that aren't. And if we can help make their life a little easier by passing on a blanket, a blanket or a jacket or a sleeping bag. It's a good thing to do. Now, 
I am hoping that my message to be sensible, to dress for the season, to look at how you heat your home will sink in. And instead of a nasty surprise when you get the winter heating bill, you could get a pleasant supply surprise with a lower bill. Oh, because even with rate rises, wouldn't that be nice? If you could beat them at their own game, I think it would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you know someone who might like this video, there is a share button. If you hit that button, it sends them a link just to this video. We don't harass them with anything else. And if you think they might benefit from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, there is a link to Cheapskates underneath me there too. Have a great day, everyone. And I really hope... I see you all in the forum very, very soon. Until then, though, keep calm and keep cheap skating.